Now that we have started our Spotfire for AWS instance, the next thing to do is actually connect to the data to create some analysis files. In my particular case, my data resides in a Redshift cluster that I have on my AWS account. So we're going to go through the step to connect to that. First thing you will need is to get some information about your cluster. To create the connection, you will need the endpoint, the port number, and which database you want to connect along with the credentials that go with it. When we build this connection, we're going to use the Spotfire Analyst desktop client that is installed inside the AWS instance we just started. To connect to that instance, we'll use remote desktop so we can access that client and create the connection. When you launch your remote desktop connection, you will notice that Tipco Spotfire Analyst client is right on your desktop. Let's run the analyst and see what we have there. By default, the analyst will run the first time in the Add Data tab. Here you have different ways of connecting to your data. Spotfire has multiple ways to bring data and use that for an analysis. You can bring data directly from flat files. You can bring data from data tables as well as connections to data sources. In this particular case, since we have a big amount of data in our Redshift cluster, we're going to use in database analytics. Tipco Spotfire has the capability of to bring data into memory and do in memory analysis from different sources, including Redshift. In my case, I want to go directly and leverage all the benefits that I have from the columnar store in Redshift and do in database analysis. First thing we have to do is create a data connection. So we'll connect to our Redshift client. As I said, we'll use the endpoint and the port number. I'll add my credentials. and pick the database I want to connect to. Once I click Connect, Spotfire will open the connection wizard and will show me all the data that I have in my particular cluster. In this case, I just have a couple of tables. I can just click and add one table at a time or multiple tables. I can create relations between those tables. I can just pick and choose which fields of the table I will include in my analysis file. And I also have the capability to create custom queries. Custom queries allows me to create a query that will be exposed as a table inside my analysis file. Once I have done this and I have selected my set of table, in this case, I just have one table I need to work on. And I press OK. I go to the Add Data Table Wizard. Here is important because here's how we choose the, that Spotfire will ingest this data. If I select keep the table data external to the file, I'll be doing in database analytics. Essentially, I'll be pushing down the queries and letting Redshift do the heavy lifting for my uh, analysis. So when I do groupings in a chart or in a cross tab, all that information will get pushed down and the smaller result sets will be kept in memory for you to analyze. If I do import data table, I'll bring all the data that is on that tables or tables that I selected into the in-memory engine of Spotfire and work with all the data in memory. In my particular case, I have about 140 million rows in my database and I'm working on an M3 medium instance. So I'll prefer to do in database analytics and leverage the power of Redshift. When I click OK, Spotfire will open the analysis file with the data that I selected. As you can see on the left hand side, I have all the fields that are coming from my database. They are divided into two sections, number and categories. Those will allow me to work with my analysis. The other thing you can see is that Spotfire will push down a very simple query, getting me the row count of all the data that I have in that database. Now I can start analyzing my data. For example, I can take the mother's age and drop that down to the x axis. That way, I will have a breakdown on how many babies were born based on the mother's age. As you can see, since the mother's age was a numeric value, Spotfire decided to use a continuous scale. I think that this data will look better if I use the mother's age as a categorical scale, so I have one bar for each age. So it's very simple to do this. Just right click on the axis and I can choose categorical scale and that will give me the results that I want. 
once I have done this, I have the possibility to save my analysis file into the library so I can continue to work with it from the web client. So let's do that. I'll go to my library. In this case, I will create a new folder. I'll call it US Census. And inside that, I will write my analysis file. Once I've done that, I have the capability to access that through the web client. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I go to the web client and log myself in, I'll see my new US Census folder inside my new natality analysis, and I can just click and run it from there. Once the analysis load, you see that I have the same view that I had from the uh, analyst client. And the view is also interactive as it was on the analyst client. From the web client, I also have the capability of using that to create or modify the visualization I'm working on. So if I click on edit, I have similar capabilities that I have on the web client. Again, I have all the my categories and numbers from my data set. I have the capability to add visualizations like other tables or cross tab or charts. I can create detailed visualizations on my data. So if I right click on one of the columns and let's say I want to dig a little bit deeper from uh, this chart to a next visualization, I can go to create detailed visualization. Uh, let's pick a pie chart. In this pie chart, uh, I will want to see the information on the gender of the babies born for this particular uh, mother's age that I selected. So I just drop the child's text in color by, and I have the breakdown of that. So uh, now I know that for all the babies born when the mother's age was 28, actually 40. 8% were females and 51% were males. And now I have this done, I can just easily go ahead and pick any other bars and see the spread of those particular ones. So remember that in this case, we're using in database analytics. So every time I click or select, Redshift is the one that is doing the number crunching and sending the results set back to Spotfire for display. So once I finish, of course, I can just go ahead and save that back to the repository or back to the library. So once my analysis is saved into the library, it's ready for others to use.